Welcome to NX for Manufacturing Tech Tips. Today's tech tip is an introduction to the new milling enhancements in NX85 CAM. We're here today with Jim Hughes, and Jim's going to be doing the demonstration today. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Aaron. Okay, uh, so a little bit about what I was going to cover today is I'm going to show just a very brief uh, showing the 2.5D uh, volume milling. Uh, as has been introduced uh, recently in 8.5 and then uh, there's a separate tech tip out there just on this uh, subject so I will keep that one fairly short and not uh, do a whole lot of uh, uh, in that on this session today but I uh, invite you to go out and find the, the demo of the, uh, the uh, uh, I'm sorry the video of the tech tip for this then I'm going to show a little bit of rest milling with uh, flow cut uh, and, and cutting corners uh, using a reference tool. Uh, we'll run through that and actually create an operation. Then we're also going to go off and do some contour profiling. Contour profile has been around a while, but we're actually going to uh, show the uh, introduction of the, uh, th that is new, the ring height adjustment where you can control uh, which portion of the tool is cutting uh, as you're profiling. And then I'll finish it up with uh, some 3 to 5 axis uh, tool tilt. Uh, and uh, we've got a nice little presentation on that one also. So with that, we'll jump right off into the, the demo. Okay, I can see your screen, Jim. Okay, thank you. Let me... let, that, let the messages go away now that I have it. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I've already opened up a part, and I want to go create uh, the new uh, floor wall milling uh, oper type operations. And so what I'm going to do here is uh, come down through here, tell it right away. It, it displays me the stock that is available to be cut. I can come in, tell it I want to cut these floors, pick multiple floors if I want. And when I generate, it'll actually generate the tool path for it. And uh, you know, very quickly, I can get feedback to see what that tool path looks like. Now, if I don't like the way this looks in here, it's fairly easy at that point to come back, tell it I want to change the profile of that, and tell it to follow the part. So now, we'll go look and we'll do it one more time with the 3D material removal so we can actually see the uh, material being removed. Now we'll get a much better finish there as we can see what the part's going to look like. Okay. The second operation I'll create on this part is uh, I'm going to do the same type of operation. Come over here. I'm going to tell it the floor. I want to cut this other floor that I missed on the first one. And now I've got my floor for it. And if I wanted to look at the resultant workpiece of that, here's what it's going to look like. And I probably should not spin that around because I know that doesn't look good in the graphics uh, window when I do that too much. Okay, so the second thing I want to do is I'll go ahead and flip this over and let's go ahead and do the other side of this part. And uh, same thing, we'll create an operation. And again, I can pick multiple floor heights if I want. I'll tell that to follow the part instead of a zig. And we will create the tool paths on it. So, very quickly and easily, you can create these uh, volume uh, metric tool passes. And uh, th this is introduced, it's, it's really to help uh, with the uh, creation of tool paths on two and a half D. So you're actually not actually doing three axis machining on these type of tool paths. Okay? And like I said, there is a separate video out there uh, with tech tips just on these op type operations. And I invite you to go out and uh, review that. Okay? The next subject I wanted to move to is we're going to uh, talk about the rest milling. And Basically, the rest milling is cutting the corners uh, that are left over when you use a tool that is too big uh, to finish the part. An example being, 
Uh, I've already got a cavity mill operation in here that is uh, basically roughing the part. Then I do a contour profile with a 4 millimeter ball end mill to cut the part uh, to near size. Then I, what I want to do is now cut these corners along that were left over. So I'm going to go ahead and create an operation that is going to be a mill contour. We're going to do a flow cut with a reference tool. This means that we're going to flow along those corners and we will tell it which size tool that we used uh, to uh, cut it originally. So I'm going to grab my two millimeter ball end mill. My cut area, I want to specify where on the part I want to cut and I'm just going to drag a box around the cut area. We'll come into our flow cut drive methods here. I want my hookup distance. This is the distance uh, that, uh, that on where it will actually look to hook up a similar type of, uh, of uh, operations. And then down here, I also want my this step over. I'm going to change it over. And then here's where I need to tell it my reference tool. When I machined this previous, my previous operation, I had this 4 millimeter ball end mill and I need to specify that. Okay, with that let's go ahead and generate a toolpath. So right away it knew based on that uh, where we had cut with the 4 millimeter ball end mill. Now we're coming in with this uh, two, mil 2 millimeter ball and we're going to profile the corners. And we've got a uh, mixed uh, operation type, uh, I'm sorry, toolpath types to where Depending on whether it's a steep or whether it's non-steep, we will get uh, uh, different uh, directions of cut. And I'll show that here in just one moment once it finishes figuring it out. Figured something, I think, guys. I'm going to have to back up one step. And, oh, oh here's where I went wrong. This was set at 10% of the tool. I'm sorry, I wanted to go 0.3 millimeter. What I did not do was change from percent of my tool but it was fairly quick for me to go figure out what my problem was when I saw I had way too many passes to cut that part. And so now it's uh, going back and it'll calculate the tool paths here. But I knew that I had way too much time there. Uh, so if we zoom up on this, this is what I was talking about. You'll notice as we're cutting the non-steep areas, we're, uh, we're going back and forth across the part. Now as we're doing the steep, we're doing zigzag uh, up and down. And so now let's go verify those, or look at the verification on those tool paths. And uh, I'm going to slow that guy down a bit. And uh, so we'll go play that tool path. You can see it's actually zigzagging back and forth down along that corner. And it's going to whittle these out. But then when it's going along the uh, horizontal surfaces, it's actually uh, profiled back and forth, uh, zigzagging that direction. Big improvement uh, in, in, in the surface finish and being able to control your tool. Give it uh, uh, lots of control on that. Okay. So there is that operation. I will uh, uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, if we wanted to verify this whole process, we could actually, if we wanted to look at the result in 3D, we could see that on this part. And it will show us what the part looks like uh, based on the current cuts. And we can kind of see I hadn't actually finished this area up here, but then you can kind of see the tool pass down there. So. Okay, uh, the next one I want to cover is I'm going to uh, go move off into our Contour Profile. Contour Profile has been around for several uh, versions of NX, but what I want to show you today is the um, creating an operation and then controlling the ring height uh, for the finish of it. So, uh, Typically, when we would machine these in the past, we would uh, uh, actually use a ball end mill. And if you come in with just a ball, let me replay this and just kind of show you. 
typical tool path that you'd do in the past was you'd machine this something like this with just a ball end mill. The time to do that is actually quite a bit longer. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a contour profile operation. Contour profile allows us to simply specify the floor. It will automatically determine walls for us, and it knows that this is our wall. And then we can actually contour that wall with the side of the tool, similar to swarf cutting it, as opposed to uh, just uh, using the ball end mill. One of the advantages of doing that is uh, the time required uh, required for this type of operation is much uh, shorter. So, okay. So the one thing that is uh, the improvement here was in the past, if we had left this set to none and generated that tool path, that would be the type of operation that would have resulted. But what we have available today is uh, being able to go control that and uh, tell it what the ring height on the tool is. Let me go back in there one moment. So when I look at this uh, ring height, uh, so yeah, we had the option of none, constant, or variable. And I'm going to use variables this, uh, this morning. Next thing I want to do is I want to come into my cutting parameters, multiple passes. Uh, I want multiple depths of cut. We're going to tell it this is 28 millimeters uh, the total depth, and I want uh, seven passes. And we'll go ahead and generate an operation for this. And so if we go look look at the verify on this type of tool path, we will actually get a much better finish using the side, you know, side of the tool and uh, plus it's much faster than using the ball end mill that we would have seen originally. And if you look at this finish, it's, uh, it's better than uh, if we did not have that ring height set and we left this set to none we generate that. This you'll notice a difference, in, uh, and I'm going to zoom up on that area here in just a moment once it finishes that. So let's zoom up here. We look the tool path here. And you'll notice th there will be definite steps where you step over, uh, and it's already visible here. So your finish is reflecting the, uh, the steps in this. That's why you would want to use that variable ring height uh, so that you can eliminate these steps in here and get a much better finish. Okay? So that's the result there. Uh, here was one uh, with the uh, variable. Let's go ahead and refresh, and, and if I just show the uh, workpiece, the finished result and workpiece here, you'll notice that that does not have the steps in it. Okay, so a uh, big improvement in the way that uh, you know, your, your finished operations and what they're going to look like as you uh, machine the part. Okay, the last operation that I wanted to go and work on today is the 3 to 5 axis uh, tilting. What this is designed for is uh, for you to be able to create a tool path in a 3 axis uh, format. So what I have currently, I've already generated this tool path. Uh, if we go look at this, and I just look at some points, you'll notice with a short tool holder, we're colliding over here in the corners. Uh, or also, if I come over, sorry, let me get all the way down here. So if we come over here, we're colliding with the clamps also. Uh, that is very undesirable. Uh, it's kind of detrimental to your uh, machine tool life. Uh, but the advantage, we've, we want to use a short tool to make it more rigid. 
So uh, what we'll do here is uh, tilt this toolpath. And uh, it's very easy to program, just the, the flat uh, three-axis toolpath. Then I can come over here uh, on my toolpath and say I want to tilt it. Let me turn the lock off first. And so we'll say tilt. Now, here are some of the parameters that we get when we're uh, uh, going to tilt this tool. We're saying we want to fan 30% of the tool distance. The max tilt is going to be 45 degrees, so I don't want to go beyond 45. And uh, I want to clear my holder by 100 thousandths down here. And I want to make sure I always clear my shank by 30 thousandths, or the neck also. Uh, the neck I'm not worried about because this tool doesn't have one. So I'll say OK to this. This toolpath that was already created that quickly, I now have a five axis toolpath. And if you notice, we are now tilted enough to clear the, uh, the clamps. So the holder is not, is not colliding with the clamps. And as we get over here into the corners, it's tilting both directions away from the part there also. Let me slow this guy down a bit. Let's let it run through just a little bit. Uh, what I want to do is let it kind of go just enough that you can see. Once it gets out into the part, it stood back up. So we're back to a three-axis toolpath that uh, does not have to uh, uh, be tilted because it, it, you don't have any clearance issues there. And so we've actually now went from the five-axis back to simply cutting a three-axis toolpath, which, you know, less motion with the machine. And to take this a step further, if you've got your full machine kinematics in here and you want to simulate that full machine kinematics uh, that set up, this three to five axis toolpath can be simulated. And so uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm, uh, I'm going to go full screen so I get a little more uh, graphics area here. And let's go ahead and run that. And so now you can see we've got the full kinematics available and being able to see that toolpath being machined. And note that we are clearing the clamps and the, the walls now with our tool holder. And again, I was not going to let that run all the way through. I'll let it run just a, a couple of minutes here just to show you that uh, you know it knows to to move all around and clear those. Uh, it, it's aware of where the part is. And then as it comes around, it will stand the tool up more because it doesn't have to uh, have it tilted over as far. And it will eventually come back to where it's simply a three-axis tool path once there, it's clear. And there it's now back to just simply standing it up. Great, Jim.